ready to go. Hello, everybody. It is Thursday, August 10th. This is MS National Office Hours. My name is Heather Cox. With me today are my fabulous co-hosts. Hey, everybody. Stephanie. Victoria. Hey, I'm Garrett. And I'm Andrea. And I am super excited for today's office hours because uh, we've got Amy Bandy Taylor and some friends of hers here to present. But uh, I'm actually going to present the first few slides to give us some updates on Microsoft Forms. Um, Microsoft Forms was a huge request at the end of last season, and uh, they've got lots of great things coming out. Um, they just did a big update, so we're really excited uh, for that. So. Um, I think Amy still plans to to drive, correct? Perfect. Yes, coming up in just a second. Because I am already getting into vacation mode. This is my last meeting before vacation mode. <laughs> All right. So, um, uh, Microsoft Forms, great tool uh, for those of you that have never used it. Just a quick overview: uh, Microsoft Forms. You can create quizzes, surveys, things to gather information. Uh, makes it really easy for people to do it electronically. And I have lots of little Easter eggs hidden in my slides at least. So if you hover over um, any image, it might link to something else. Here it links to the Microsoft Forms blog. So if you click on uh, the Forms icon there, it'll take you to the Forms blog where they are regularly um, posting, they had a new post as of this morning talking about uh, creating um, the visual side of forms. I'm not going to go a ton into that this afternoon, um, but hopefully that kind of helps you. There are, are multiple blogs like this one on almost all the products. So if you need help locating a blog for another product, always reach out. Happy to help uh, locate that as well. Oh, I didn't save my. Anyway, I'm supposed to be able to click those and they show up one at a time. But the biggest thing that I am excited for Microsoft Forms update is the present live function. And if I wasn't on already on vacay mode, I should have had one ready, but I don't. But it's going to be one, Andrea. Too. She's got it. All right, so she'll get one up in a second. But uh, you'll be able to scan the QR code and answer the questions uh, really quickly and then new that I'm really excited about is the uh, dynamic real results. So as you can see in that little um, uh, GIF that's playing there, uh, you're able to see the reactions and the percentages uh, very quickly. Um, and then AI is everywhere, right? Now it is going to be utilizing AI theme suggestions. And so as it quickly reviews what you're asking about. It's going to give you some great suggestions. Um, so keep that in mind if you're looking for something specific. Um, so if you want back to school, then type something very clearly that to get it. Sometimes I get frustrated because I'm not smart enough to give it the right keywords. So just keep that in mind. If you even if you don't necessarily want it in the title or something, get your background, then change the title. Um, all right, Amy, do you want to share that example or do you want me to keep going? Keep going. I'll do it afterwards. So okay, perfect. The flow. All right. Also new and exciting, being able to save the response after submitting. In fact, I saw something uh, recently about wanting people were signing up for sessions and they needed to be able to go back and look at what they actually signed up for instead of one person having to constantly look at that spreadsheet. Um, so being able to save uh, responses after submission is just one of the settings that you can turn on for uh, your users to be able to save it. So you as the form creator, not a, a setting in the admin portal. And then this one makes me nervous because I don't want people to, but as the form creator, you can uh, allow them to also edit their response after uh, submission. So if you want to let them go back in and say, I can't come to that session anymore and I want to go to this one instead, um, you can do that. So very exciting to see these two new options uh, becoming available. 
and most exciting. We've used many other tools for this in the past. Um, but it released uh, just last month. It's still rolling out. So if you don't see it, be patient, it's coming. But being able to have the PowerPoint forms add on to be able to do the live and the dynamic responses right from in PowerPoint. I even had a colleague saying, what's the best tool to use? And I sent her back Microsoft Forms at the end of July. And she was like, my presentation is going to be before this comes out. So next, but she's really excited to use these moving forward. So um, also, if you hover over this one, it'll take you to, uh, it should link to, if it saved everything, um, to that session um, to be able to, oh, perfect, Dwayne. Thank you for sharing that. Um, can be controlled, the editing and saving can be controlled to give the creator, form creator, that um, control. Um, and I agree with Dwayne's comment of why would you want to disable it? Is that all of my updates? Oh, I've got one set of updates left, and then I'm going to hand it over to Amy. Um, but in Microsoft Team meetings, when you see the um, form option or poll option, it's all part of Microsoft Forms. You can now have those instant forms. They're going to give you lots of pre-created form ideas that you can modify quickly. Um, the reuse of polls that you use regularly. And then um, updating. I feel like these are um, maybe a little bit older, but you've got the ranking questions, the rating questions, and the word cloud, which we are huge fans of here at Microsoft. We use it quite often. So uh, really excited to see that. So um, Amy, I'll hand it over to you and uh, your friends. All right. So um, before I introduce my friends, um, the second part of our session today is Power Automate and how you can use Power Automate with um, forms to create some really robust um, automation process automation. Um, and I have some friends that I'm going to introduce who have done something very cool with the two tools and they're going to talk about it and show you a demo. Um, but for those of you who aren't familiar with Power Automate, I'm just going to just give a quick brief overview. So Power Automate can help you create automated flows. It is so much fun to use and so easy. I've got a couple of links there. One that takes you actually to the Power Automate tool and the second one that takes you to the learn documentation if you want to learn more. There's a couple of there's three pieces of flow that you need to know. So first you have to have a trigger. What actually triggers the flow? And it could be anything from somebody adds a new document to a SharePoint library. Somebody submits a new form. Um, you can have ones that that are automatically run every hour and are looking for um, different changes that have been made to either a SharePoint library or, or something to that effect. Then you have connectors. There are over 600 connectors in Power Automate that you can connect to all different kinds of third party applications that you can connect to. Um, super easy to use. Some of them are premium and require some premium licensing, but for the most part, a lot of them are free. And then you have your actions. What is actually occurring in the Power Automate? Um, you, a lot of the things that I see frequently are, you know, sending emails to people, posting in Teams, um, updating information in SharePoint. All of these things can be done very quickly, very easily using Power Automate. At the bottom, I have, have a pro tip. If you're going to be creating Power Automates, doing really cool process automation, don't use your personal account. Because if you leave the organization, it's going to fail. And also assign a co-owner so that if you do leave your organization, a co-owner can go in and edit the flow if they need to. But use a service account with your connectors, something that won't um, stop working if you leave the organization. So pro tip. A um, couple other things I want to mention. There are templates, tons and tons and tons of cool templates. If you're not sure how to get started, go in and look through these templates. You'll find something that's really cool that'll at least get you started, and then you can build off of these templates. Um, super really cool, fun stuff that you can do. And the last thing I'm going to say, one of my favorite things, is that you can create Power Automate in Teams Actions, or Teams Actions via Power Automate. So if you click on the three dots on a, um, a post in Teams, and you go down to More Actions, and then over to Create a New Action, you can create your own custom actions using Power Automate. And so this is the formula, the window you'll get, and you can pick one of the ones that's already pre-built, the templates, or you can create your own, create something that's totally custom. So one of my favorite features, I love that. You can do 
whatever action you can think of on Teams posts using Power Automate. And that is the last slide that I have. So before I introduce my friends, I am going to stop sharing the slides and share my other screen so that you can actually see the uh, present feature in uh, forms. So here is my form that I created last night. And yes, I created it at supper time and I was super, super hungry. So I'm going to go up here and create this, hit this present button. And so now if you want, you can go ahead and scan that QR code that you see on the screen and you will actually be able to complete this survey that I created. Do you call it dinner or supper? Sometimes I call it supper. Sometimes I call it dinner. I don't know. I think it depends on where you live in the world. People call it different things. Oh, we, and you can see in real time the responses. 90% are calling it dinner. Y'all must be from the South. I think in the North we call it supper more. And then I'll scroll over to the second question and you can see what's your favorite go to fast food? And it looks like Taco Bell for the win. And if this was a quiz that you were doing with students, you can actually show the correct answer too, which I think is pretty cool if you're using this with students. All right, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Um, so I'm going to introduce my friends. They are from Ohio University, Renee, Perry, and Jeremy. They want to come on screen. Yay, there they are. So Renee reached out to me um, a few weeks ago. They wanted to create, or they were looking for an app in Teams or some Teams functionality where they can do a live chat. They had a customer who needed to chat with a group of their um, team members. They wanted to be able to do that. We don't have that out of the box with Teams. So I helped them. And actually, I want to give a plug. This was actually Dwayne's idea. He kind of put this little bug in my ear. And so between all of us, we came together and created this really cool thing. And I'm going to let Renee and Jeremy talk about it, and Jeremy's going to do a demo of what he built because it is so cool. And now I'm going to be quiet. Well, thank you for uh, allowing us to come today. This has been a wonderful partnership with you. Um, like Amy said, we are from Ohio University. We've joined um, a newly formed department called the Business Service Center, where we are bringing all purchasing and travel functions at the university. So, like many of you um, can imagine we get a lot of questions and we were trying to brainstorm on how to how to find a live chat feature and wondering since there's a teams feature if there was anything and like amy said we reached out to her and it was actually give the props to amy within like hours she was messaging back saying i have an idea can we get on a call um so we got on a call and Jeremy was able to take what Amy shared and turned it into something wonderful. Um, so I will first start um, sharing and then I will hand it over to Jeremy. So I created a form um, that basically is just live chat with Ohio Business Service Center. Um, I created the header of when we would be able to respond um, eight to five, Monday through Friday. And so, you know, just like your form, hello, welcome to Ohio Business Service Center. How may we assist you? Um, so I'm just asking if I could book a hotel room for a conference. So I'm going to submit it. And then once I submitted it, I also put thank you for contacting and we will respond via Teams. That way they were able to respond to us um, and know where we'd be responding to them, I should say. Jeremy, I'm going to hand it over to you now. I have the right screen to share. All right. So um, with what Amy had uh, walked us through and did a demo of, we took that um, and the after Renee created the um, the forms. Uh, we were able to take the ID of the form and go in the Power Automate and link that as a trigger um, for whenever a new response is su submitted. Um, it will grab Power Automate, will grab that response. Uh, it, here it will convert the time uh, from 
UTC to Eastern time zone that we're in. Grabbing the submission time off of the form, and then we have it reach out to 0365 to get the responders with the responders email to get all their information. And then from that, uh, post a card into a chat uh, channel. And um, Amy had showed us this website, adaptivecards.io uh, forward slash designer, where you can um, select your host app that you want to post the adaptive card into Microsoft Teams, and you can play around with the settings of where you want things, drag and drop. You can add different containers and um, card structure, change it over here, and then it puts out the uh, JSON uh, syntax here below that you can copy over into um, this portion. And then you just go through and add um, here to get the user, the email, display name. And when you do that, it will, uh, from what Renee posted, uh, this came through automatically. I uh, got alerts that, um, you know, we created a Teams channel with live chat for the group that's wanting to, um, who's going to be um, watching and answering questions. And so it displays their question. They had it to where uh, pulls their department. Uh, so we know um, who we, you know, we sort some of the our uh, employees answers for different departments, um, and then once you hit chat with user, it automatically brings up a one-on-one -on -one Teams chat with that person. So that was for our case use. We wanted something simple for our um, the people that we work with to reach out to us and um, be able to quickly get get a question to us and that we could reach back out with them and get an answer to them. Very, very, very cool, Jeremy. I love it. I think you did an awesome job. Um, I know one question that you and I and Renee had talked about when we were on our call is how you would or the users would know when you've completed one of the chats that come through. Have you thought about that? How you're going to do that? We did. We started doing um, the thumbs up or the love, just any kind of an emoji, uh, just saying that you grabbed it with with some kind of an emoji, and that seemed to work. Excellent. Excellent. So we have a few minutes. If anybody has any questions um, for Renee or Jeremy, we can we have a few minutes. We can answer some questions. Here are most of your users um, familiar with Teams and use Teams during the day? Yes. Yeah. yeah, especially when we went. Um, so Jeremy and I are actually in the business service center, but we actually came from IT. Um, so we both worked in IT. I've worked in IT for like 20 years. Um, in the, the business side of things. But when we when COVID happened, as many of you, uh, teams became our number one way of communicating. So it's very heavily used on campus. Excellent. <laughs> Have you ever had requests scroll off and get missed? Or do you think that might happen? So we haven't made it live yet. Um, we're getting ready to release it. Um, and that is a worry, but I do think with as many people we have around, I think 13 in our team right now, um, and it will be expanding. So I think it, as many eyes as we have, I think we have some people that are very detailed and will be able to <laughs> help. Yeah, that's a great question. I think one of my questions is, I'm I, I'm already thinking, like I wrote in there, hmm, can we do that with office hours? Like, I'm curious. What other scenarios do like could we use this with? Like I, I'm trying to figure like I feel like it's such a great, you know, 
way to take in information and uh, you know and i'm thinking internally too we have so many different processes and things like that um different what what other situations might be appropriate in higher ed in k-12 and and then there's yeah there's some other questions in here um you know how are you, your environment set up is this in the default environment yes um yeah everything is set up with this uh default i do i know one thing that uh we've been waiting on a service account to get made so that we can change because uh when i shared the screen you could see that it said jeremy graham posted um the chat but um everything is if we send out the link to people it's all live they can get on it and yeah, we didn't have to turn anything on, anything special. Um, we do have an A5. Um, so, yeah. Um, is it appropriate then, to ask for more information regarding adaptive cards? And I was going to follow that one up. I know we talked about that on our prep call, Jeremy. You were mm -hmm. going to share a resource for the adaptive card cr creator. Yes. Correct. I'll put and he also the has chat. the screenshots, too. Oh, perfect. Oh. I did ask yeah. him to come prepped with the screenshots for the app for their flow that they made, because once you know it's possible, you like don't want to have to search that hard for it. So I was like, do you mind? So you can share those or a way to look at those. Yeah, I was well. trying I to oh, drop that into the chat, but um, it's not letting me. OK, well, you know what? If you just share it with Andrea, we will put it in our yeah. office hours team or we can also send that out. But I mean, my brain immediately went to like, how can we use this? Like, what processes can we improve? Because I know there's always something that we can work on. Um, let me see here. Oh, OK, so Aaron's saying one method of creating a form for HR to fill out and have pop power automate, create user accounts. OK, yeah. Um, and then Paul says, can you generate a report on how many calls you responded to? Yeah, because it's in forms and you can just do export the results in Excel and then you can run all kind of reports. That's awesome. So we have thought of that. <laughs> um, Scott had a question. Speaking of environments, is, is there any way to select the, uh, I guess that's environment that Teams defaults to? For example, trying to make approvals, et cetera, et cetera, Teams always uses the default environment and there isn't an option that I know to select a default one. Not sure what you mean by Teams environment. Don't know. So, so a lot of when we do uh, Center of Excellence training, we tell them to not use the default environment for Power Apps. We tell them to create a uh, different environment to create those, but um, Teams, it sounds like, doesn't let you pick a different um, environment. So if you're doing a DevOp dev environment versus a production environment or something along those lines, we try and use those different environments to put some guardrails. So I don't know the answer to that one, um, but I know what you're asking. So I'm going on vacation, so I might phone a friend here to Dwayne <laughs> or someone to help me locate that answer. Um, uh, so that we can get it back to you. If not, <laughs> I will work on it. It's just going to be in a week. Awesome. Um, yeah, I love it. He's called. Oh, Dwayne not says it. not it. Nick Miller, are you on this call? I can ping. I, I can ping him in the moment. That's a good call out. Nick Miller <laughs> is the Power Apps guy. Awesome. Well, I did not know we had surprise guests, and I love it because that was one of the things we'd love to hear directly from people that are using it. We the customers. And I know you're Ohio University and not my Buckeyes, but Stephanie here, <laughs> Stephanie's got your back. Don't worry. She's got her husband and her brother that are OU grads. So yeah, you're, you're I'm a rocket. I was a, I was a rocket, but I spent a lot of time driving from Toledo to Athens when we were in college and different places. So, <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure you probably came to Halloween and some oh, of the others. All the things, <laughs> all the things. Although I stayed clear when it was mom's weekend. That's the stuff of legend. So yeah, thank yes. you guys so much for, for being here and sharing. I know it's a little daunting sometimes to come on and kind of sh pull back the curtain a little bit on like what you've done. And we always 
I think in our minds think that what we did is not as cool as everybody else literally thinks it is. So thank you guys. It is awesome work and keep doing it. You know, I think to just encourage everyone that shows up to office hours, you all are doing things in your environments that are really cool and worth sharing. So don't be afraid. Tag one of us to be your partner ride along and, and we're happy to do it with you. Yeah, just Absolutely. to piggyback on that, and then I want to turn it and make sure Garrett also talks, and Andrea, you obviously have something to add too, but like Stephanie's saying, reach out to us if you think you have something cool to share. We're always one. I mean, we're happy to keep making, you know, putting Microsoft folks on the schedule, but what you guys are sharing, the things that you're doing and learning from one another, I think it's it's fabulous. Andrea, I want to go to you, but also Garrett, if you'll then come back and, and tell us about next week one more time. I was just going to say, I know many of you responded when I asked the question, and so I'm going to take it as kind of my, you know, we rotate who coordinates. Kind of my mission is to make sure that whenever possible, I can have a customer guest with me. And I think Power Automate and the automation and those things are really becoming a passion for me to learn more about of what's possible. Um, so I'm going to reach back out to those of you that jumped on. We have turned off the ability to add to the chat of last year. So it may come back around in this one uh, this year. So if you've done something like this and would like to share your automation tips and tricks or just a process that you're working on, we'd, we'd love to have you. And um, I'll be reaching back out as uh, we get into this season. And I don't know, is Garrett, is, are you still here, Garrett? It yeah, doesn't appear that Garrett's on hold. Okay. Yeah, Gary um, might have had um, to drop, but I'm happy to pop in. Um, so yeah, next week, I know most of you probably have questions about uh, what's happening with A1 Plus versus A1, the storage things that, that all go along with that. So Garrett has graciously reached out uh, to some folks from our product group to come on and explain some of those changes and licensing implications that come along with that. Um, he, just to reiterate what he said, these are not the people that necessarily made those uh, decisions. They're just the ones that are charged with kind of carrying them out and communicating them um, to us, uh, which we then try to communicate to you. So please come tomorrow. I mean, not tomorrow. Goodness gracious, the back to back uh, next week uh, to get your questions answered. And for any of your colleagues that won't be able to join the call, as always, we'll, we'll record it. I know I'll be sharing it with um, some of my customers that likely won't be able to join. So hopefully we can give clarity. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes. And thank you, Amy. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Renee. We appreciate you. Um, and yeah, we'll see y'all next week. I'm going to stop the recording and then I'm going to kick y'all out. So have a <laughs> great night, everyone.